Yes. yes, we are live. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Namaste, <laughs> greeting yeah. everyone, and welcome to this Thursday live. So, this Thursday, we have a very beautiful topic uh, it's the essence of Tantra. Mm. So, so many of you that follow us are very interested in the Tantra. There is so much talking around about uh, Tantra. And uh, in this live, we want to clarify some uh, concept of Tantra, especially we want to condensate in a short time what uh, uh, really Tantra is, the so-called the essence of Tantra. <laughs> So let's uh, start uh, saying something about uh, uh, the history of Tantra, where Tantra is coming from and what is the origin, what is the root, because here uh, what we want to do is um, uh, to see, you know, what is the authentic Tantra. Nowadays there is so much uh, of this uh, uh, pseudo teaching around and it's not so easy to find the uh, uh, something authentic and uh, I would like to uh, expose you what uh, is the authentic Tantra, how to recognize this authentic teaching. So Tantra appears uh, uh, in a very ancient time. We don't even know exactly when uh, Tantra was born. Uh, definitely the root of Tantra is on the sacred text, the sacred Tantric text uh, which are called the Tantras or the Agamas. And these texts uh, are very ancient and we are talking about uh, 2,000, 3,000 years. There are um, 64 classical Tantric texts and uh, uh, out of all these 64, we have very few texts that are uh, survived in history. Many of them are being destroyed and uh, very few of them are being translated uh, in Western language. So there is uh, uh, so much of this teaching which is being lost and uh, nowadays it's not so easy to find authentic teaching. This is also uh, our mission of Aum Tantra Yoga to bring this uh, teaching uh, in a most authentic way uh, in, um, in our times. So out of this text we have uh, uh, different branches of, uh, of Tantra that have been um, developed through the years and uh, definitely the yoga, the, ta the Tantric yoga, uh, which is not possible actually to separate because uh, Tantra and yoga are actually uh, uh, united, you can't uh, really separate them. So we talk about Tantric yoga and um, uh, this uh, teaching of yoga has uh, the roots in the Vedas. Uh, while Tantra came a little bit after, the Vedas uh, are these uh, uh, four big categories of, uh, of texts that are um, like 4,000, 5,000 years old. And uh, the Tantra teaching came a little bit later. But for many, many years, uh, it was not so famous. Uh, most of the teaching of yoga it was uh, the so-called Vedantic from the Veda, which uh, is quite uh, of in contradiction with, uh, with the Tantra. So when you are approaching yoga, when you are approaching this beautiful philosophy and spirituality, uh, you have pretty much these two uh, great teachings, Tantra and Vedanta. So the Tantric teaching came uh, a little bit later. Later, uh, the appearance of the classical yoga of Patanjali. And uh, we are talking about the fourth, fifth centuries when Tantra uh, really blossomed. It became, you know, much more uh, known in the, in the world. And uh, this time is the time where the great teaching of Kashmir Shaivis appeared. Uh, in Northern India and also the Tibetan Tantric Buddhism uh, appeared uh, and uh, these are the, the, let's say, the starting of the, of the teaching of the Tantra in a more uh, wide uh, spread in the world and there is where we can find the pearl of the Tantric teaching. 
So the essence of the tantric teaching, the essence of the tantric philosophy, if we compare with uh, the Vedanta, it's basically uh, the fact that uh, the tantric teaching is non-dual, which means that for the first time out of so many spiritual paths uh, and religions, it came out a philosophy of spirituality, of life, of, this, of the view of the universe, when uh, everything is expressed as one. In Tantra, the philosophy and the practice and the actual uh, practice in life is to see that everything is one. So it's not the spiritual teaching that is looking for some God somewhere uh, that you, we have to reach or we have to know. In Tantra, God is everywhere. There is not uh, an opposition between the matter, the manifestation, and the spirit, and God, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the spirit is everywhere, and it's actually one with everything. And here it comes the beautiful uh, view of the Shiva and Shakti, of this uh, spirit and matter of consciousness and energy, which is the base, which is the fundament of the, of the Tantric teaching. And so one of the first things we uh, learn in, uh, in the Tantric teaching is the fact that uh, everything in this universe, whether it's manifested or not, it's a way of liberation. Especially the manifested things which are in front of us, which are at our disposal every day of our life, are all gates to the spirit, are all means of spiritual realization to reach God, to reach uh, the great spirit, to reach Shiva, whatever you want to call it. So the beautiful, uh, the beauty of the, the Tantric teaching is therefore that everything that is our disposal, whatever kind of energy, whatever things you do, it's a way of spiritual liberation. And here it comes the very interesting things that attract so many people also nowadays. Being a very ancient philosophy, very ancient practice, um, it's very actual, it's very suitable for uh, the Western mentality, it's very suitable for our modern times. Tantra is very modern because it has one great characteristic which is uh, um, that there is not the requirement of uh, being in austerity. If you see so many of the spiritual path, including uh, so many of the religion, most of the religion, they required sacrifice. They required mortification of the body. They required to suppress uh, energy, to suppress uh, uh, sexual energy, to suppress so many of the natural things that are uh, in life, but they are seen as obstacles. While in Tantra, actually, there is no obstacles to your spiritual realization, and actually, you can live enjoying the life. This is in Tantra is called the so called Bhukti Mukti. The Bhukti is the enjoyment of the senses, and Mukti is liberation. Uh, other spiritual path, they have absolutely nothing. Uh, the possibility to put these things together. While in Tantra, yes, you can enjoy life, you can have um, good food, you can have good sex, you can have money, whatever you want, but this can be a way of liberation. Of course, that's not uh, um, so easy because there is so much attachment that all these things can bring, but um, Basically, the essence of the Tantric teaching is that uh, there is no obstacles in the manifestation, there is no obstacles in the pleasure, in the enjoyment uh, of the life to the spiritual realization. So whatever you're doing, and here I can give you the example of the, uh, one of the masterpieces of the Tantric teaching, the text which brings the essence of this uh, Tantric teaching, which is called the Vidyana Bhairava Tantra. Uh, it's a, a text where there is a 116 technique for spiritual realization, for enlightenment. And uh, 
All these techniques, some of them are very abstract, but many of them are very down to earth. These are all techniques that teach you that whatever you're doing in your life, it doesn't mean that you need to do four or five hours of yoga uh, every day. Every time you're doing something, it's just a matter of bringing awareness, consciousness. You're cooking your food, you're making love, you're watching a sunset, you are just enjoying the smell of a flower, you're looking in the eyes of your lover or uh, in the eyes of a baby and there you can have a portal to spiritual realization. Every time you bring awareness on what you do, there is the possibility to become aware of your true nature. This is Tantra. The essence of the Tantra is the realization of your true nature in whatever you are doing, in whatever you're doing in your daily life. Yes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Tantra is a world-oriented path. With uh, this uh, attitude, we understand that it's not necessary to retire from the world. It's not necessary to isolate in a cave. You can still enjoy this world. You can still enjoy this life. And this is the beauty, because in many, many spiritual paths, there is this requirement that you need to renounce, the path of renouncing, renouncing to all the beauty of this life. While in Tantra, we somehow take the best of this beauty to create a lot of energy in our being. Tantra is a path of energy. Tantra is a path where everything what we do, everything what we are, the senses, everything what is around us can be a way to increase the energy in our being. And we use the energy for spiritual realization. In Tantra, we talk about chakra. We talk about the lower chakra, which are the chakra related to the more animalistic and instinct uh, part of the life, and the highest chakra, which is uh, uh, the, the chakra which uh, are connected with the perceiving of our own uh, universal nature, especially Sahasrara, the crown chakra. So in Tantra, we use everything at our disposition, like we use uh, first of everything, for sure, sexual energy, because it's the most strong and powerful, but not only. We use sound, we use to meditate with music, we use colors, we use the senses. The senses become a kind of a gateway for a tremendous source of energy. And then we channel all this energy in our spine toward the highest chakra. We talk about sublimation of the energy. So we let the energy open, activate and purify all the energy uh, channel of the being and the chakra. And we channel all the energy to the highest chakra. When the energy, especially Kundalini, if you know what is Kundalini, this powerful latent energy, which all of us has, when this energy get activated, then in the spine, then all the chakra will be open and when this uh, powerful energy reach to Sasrara, then there is the experience of oneness. There is a natural recognition of your own universality, the universality of your being. So um, somehow the uh, meditator, the tantric, stop to perceive uh, himself as a separate, stop to perceive, stop to identify with his own ego, and he start to perceive himself as oneness, as this connect with everything which is around. So he perceives that is divine, he recognizes his divine nature, and that is the great, uh, as you say, essence that Tantra bring in the, in the new way of perceiving spirituality. Yes, so oh, as you heard from Amita, uh, you can use uh, definitely all the energy that are uh, at, uh, at your disposal for practicing Tantra. And uh, of course, out of all this energy, we have one which is the strongest. And uh, most of the people approach uh, the Tantra because nowadays what you find mostly 90% of the so-called Tantra, which uh, 
And if we have to say the truth, this is the Neo Tantra, is the, is the new Tantra, which has an emphasis, or I could say an obsession with sexuality. Uh, most of the people know Tantra as sexuality. Now we are um, exposing you the essence of the Tantra and we've been talking a little bit about that because actually the sexual part of Tantra is just a little part. We can say a 5%, a 7% of what is the Tantric teaching. So yes, it's very important, the sexual energy. is the energy that drives the behavior of human being. It's a very powerful energy. But definitely this uh, extreme sexualization of the Tantra of nowadays, it becomes a, a little bit exaggerated and uh, you, uh, sometimes you risk to miss the point uh, of what is the Tantra. So I want to tell you something tonight to uh, understand what is the right approach uh, to Tantra and also to recognize what uh, is out there in the world and you find so much teaching. Actually, what makes the difference on something authentic is the approach that uh, you have on the, uh, the Tantric uh, practice. The approach also of the sexual practice, definitely, but in general of all what you're doing for your spiritual life. And what is this approach that makes the difference? It's the approach when you put spiritual realization first, mm -hmm. when you have this attitude of uh, uh, consecration, of dedicating the, uh, the, the action you're doing, the practice you're doing to something superior, to something which is the essence of everything. And all of you, whatever, even if you are uh, materialistic and you don't believe on something spiritual, you can perceive that there is a, a cosmic intelligence. You can perceive that there is something uh, behind everything. Look perhaps the nature, going into the nature and see the perfection of the nature. Uh, that is a proof that there is something uh, perfect behind everything. The nature is so powerful and uh, being in the nature and do practice in the nature just like be aware of what what happened around you it's a tantric practice. So even if you uh, whatever you are approaching if it's a, um, a sexual practice if it's hatha yoga uh, if, if it's astrology um, if it's uh, um, uh, mantras, uh, yantras, these are all tantric practices. But what makes the difference is the attitude. The attitude of uh, doing a vertical spiritual practice. What does it mean vertical? It means that it's directed to something superior. When there is this uh, um, primal characteristics uh, uh, in the practice, then you can say it's tantras. The primal characteristics are one is the consecration, offering the fruit of your practice to God, to whatever you want to call it, if you don't like this word, uh, to the great spirit, to the source of this universe, to the light, to the love, to the infinite love of this universe. Then the sublimation. The sublimation is this moving of the energy upwards, where you actually move the lower energy of our being to the highest chakra. This action is called sublimation and the sublimation is one of the essence, essence point on the tantric practice. And then the third element uh, of, the, of the tantric practice is the transfiguration. Transfiguration is a very particular practice uh, but this is fundamental in, um, in the sexual practice uh, but in whatever you're doing in, uh, in your life. Transfiguring means to see everything as divine. And sometimes it's not easy because we see the world being very bad. We see other people uh, that are not so nice with us. We see the world falling apart. There is so much violence and things. So it's very difficult sometimes to uh, see the divinity in everything, mm -hmm. in another person. Perhaps uh, you have a lover and it's long time you are together and uh, it's not easy to see, you know, the beauty 
uh, to see the essence of the other person you have on your side every day. You, you start to get used and you take it for granted. And it's much more easy to see defects, to see something which are human limitation. Yes, why not? We all have human limitation. We are not perfect. But to see beyond this human form, there is the divinity in every person, in everything you do, everywhere you can see this spark of divinity. And we have so many great masters that are talking about it. And I can mention uh, a master in the Sufi tradition called Rumi. This is, uh, 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 he's a poet and he wrote amazing poetry where everything, the essence of all his words is this infinite love for everything he was seeing, everything he was hearing, everything he was testing. And this was just the essence of love. In every word of Rumi, there is this essence, this flavor of love. Watching a full moon, tonight you can go out and see this beautiful moon we have and just watch it with these eyes of transfiguration where you don't see actually uh, the satellite that is spinning around the world <laughs> but uh, uh, you can perceive this perfection you know and it can really fulfill your heart with this beauty of the moon that is the eyes of transfiguration and actually you can see God everywhere in the eyes of your lover you can see it in a beautiful sunset watch the moon uh, see watching the nature but even in the bad things and things that are not so nice you can perceive that there is divinity there even if sometimes it's not so easy so the invitation for um, the tantric practice therefore is the right attitude even if you're looking for some authentic teaching see always if there is this consecration this verticality this dedication to the divinity and definitely in the sexual approach when uh, we have so much uh, of the most uh, tricky and slippery part of the Tantra because it's so easy to, f to fall into attachment, to fall into jealousy uh, and to fall into this attachment of pleasure and therefore extra care, extra awareness when you are approaching the sexual Tantra because uh, uh, this is actually um, the first step to do, is to have this uh, awareness, to have this uh, witness consciousness, which is seeing everything, but with detachment. So then you can become a tantric. Become a tantric means to do whatever you are doing now, but in a different way, in a more elevated way, with more consciousness. And then the essence, the beauty of uh, everything is revealed. Maybe people are not even noticed from outside, but definitely you are uh, switching your paradigm. You are entering into a new uh, way of living, which is uh, uh, the way uh, of the Tantra. You can find all this uh, uh, beautiful teaching in the sacred text, uh, in the great teaching of the, uh, of the um, ancient masters. And they're all uh, saying actually the same things. You know, this approach to see everything as love, everything as uh, perfection as it is. So I hope you got some of the uh, essence of the Tantra tonight. And uh, we are now open to answer some of your questions. Yes, time for your question. So don't be shy. If you have any curiosity about, about this very fascinating topic. There is a yes. You answer. Do I need to be initiated to start a tantric path? Oh, that's a nice, interesting question. Okay. So initiation is uh, uh, one of the fundamentals as well in, uh, in Tantra. In Sanskrit is called Diksha. Diksha means uh, initiation. And uh, uh, in the ancient uh, Tantra, in the classical Tantra, this was a requirement uh, for uh, becoming uh, a Tantric. So definitely, yes, the initiation, it's a fundament in the, in the Tantra teaching, especially in the more advanced stages. 
yes you can learn the uh, basic practice uh, here and there but then if you want to do uh, a big leap in um, in tantra the initiation is required so um, the initiation usually is done from a, a master from whoever has been initiated before and uh, this comes as a, a lineage therefore there are masters uh, uh, before us that uh, have been initiated and so the, the looking for somebody who has been initiated in Tantra to get an initiation is definitely something very important. So there are many forms uh, of initiation but again this uh, is done under a consecration. Uh, it's done with this protection and this continuation of a lineage. Uh, I and Amita, perhaps we've been initiated from some teachers for more than one teachers uh, and uh, they also had their teachers before and what we are teaching actually is not something we are inventing it's something that is coming from the tradition and we are initiating uh, other people so this means to uh, bring your uh, experience, you, you can bring uh, your uh, style, but this is not changing the actual, the essence uh, of the teaching. So then you can be sure that you got uh, an initiation, that is, the things are not being distorted. Otherwise, you can imagine uh, generation after generation how the teaching could be completely distorted and here is what we see uh, in the in the neo tantra many times uh, that it becomes very new age very superficial it's more a kind of a, a game it's more with is working on the superficiality on personality to feeling good to become a good lover but then what what is the essence of the teaching you know so it's lost and it's very easy to have this because there is a, a, this missing of the initiation. Therefore, don't look for initiation like an obsession, but ask for it. Ask for the right teacher to initiate you and the universe it will give you. So that is the right approach. Mm. So ask and the universe will provide. Definitely, it's uh, uh, something that it will happen. But ask from the heart. Ask if you really want to do this practice, if it really resonates with you, if it's really the tantric uh, teaching is uh, uh, calling you and then the authentic teaching uh, will, uh, will come to you. Beautiful. <laughs> One more question. How do I know if it's authentic tantra? Yes, Marco told about already. Um, even if it's true that when we talk about, especially when we talk about sexuality, the sexual part of Tantra, very often it is necessary a certain amount of work on the shadow because, you know, in the area of sexuality, there is the bigger monster, sometimes the bigger challenge. And if it's true that the sexual energy is a very strong, powerful energy and can speed up your evolution if you know how to channel this energy and sublimate it properly it is also true that this energy doesn't flow properly if there is blockage and uh, yeah something which uh, stop the flow of the energy not all in this uh, in sexuality and not all in this area uh, but especially in this area so uh, in, it is useful to do a certain amount of uh, uh, work at the level of personality to unleash trauma to open to surrender more to heal the childhood or whatever you know relation with the parents everything is good to live better this life and also to unleash your full potential as a human being um, so let's say this is a horizontal work but still in, uh, you know uh, um, that is an authentic tantric path if there is also verticality, if the uh, ultimate goal is uh, finding God within you. Yeah? So it's way beyond personality, it's way beyond this uh, uh, personality which you embody in this, in this life. 
So you know that you are in, a, in an authentic uh, tantric path and spiritual path in general if there is this verticality, if there is this uh, a longing for the absolute, longing for uh, something higher, something supreme, something universal. Okay, so this has to be uh, your ultimate goal in your spiritual path. Uh, otherwise, yes, it's, it's okay, so it becomes more in the real of a psychological uh, work, which is okay, but uh, yet it's not the uh, authentic path of Tantra. In the authentic path of Tantra, we are looking for God within us. Yes. So let's see if there is more of your yeah, questions. We don't see any more questions, so... Yeah, we can uh, close here. So thank you all of you for being with us. Um, we if are... some questions come up later, really write to us. We are always happy to answer, contact us anytime. Yeah, and let's stay in contact. There is much more to come. A lot of video, a lot of live event again. And uh, yes, to explore this very fascinating uh, spiritual path okay so wait you for the next live next uh, thursday wish you a beautiful day namaste all of you keep smiling and keep shining the love in this world bye Ciao. <laughs>